Hello, this is Jamerica5288, and today we're going to cut and cook some kale. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut a couple leaves off of here, and we're going to go inside and we're going to cook it. I'm not sure we're going to do it. I think I'm going to put it with some breadcrumbs and some garlic. Should be good. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you inside after I finish cutting my kale. So I've run some water, cold water, on my kale. Wash it off one time, drain it out. Fill it up with water again. I'm gonna take some table salt and we'll put it in there. This should kill any bugs that are in there that I didn't see. But I searched the, the uh, leaves to see if there were any more snails on there and there weren't. So I'm gonna put it in this water, let the water run over it and drench it in there. Rub my leaves off. Start taking these stems off. I'm just using my nail to take them off. No need for a knife, I have knives right here. <laughs> Right, I think I got most of the oh, the stems off. Wash this off. I'm gonna drain it again. Put some more water on it. If I find any more stems, I'm just pulling them off. Take my hand, wash it. Try to pull up all my leaves. is ready to be blanched. I'll be right back with you. So I have my water in a pot. I'm gonna put some salt in there. I'm gonna turn it on high. I want this thing to boil. And I'm gonna put my greens in there. Now earlier I said blanch. I should have said cook, because we are gonna let this stuff cook for about 20 to 30 minutes. You want your kale to be cooked because because we're gonna cook the the, the uh, kale and then put it in the oven with the breadcrumbs. So I'll be back with you when this stuff is done in about twenty to thirty minutes, and you'll know it's done because you'll be able to squeeze this stem and it'll fall apart or it'll it'll squish real easy. So I'll see you in twenty to thirty minutes. So while my kale is cooking, I'm gonna take some smash crackers. I just took some oyster crackers. You can use regular crackers, and I'm gonna soak it a little bit and some chicken broth. Here we are. And I'm not gonna use a lot of chicken broth. I'm gonna use about four tablespoons. Mix those together. And I want it to get pasty. I want it not to be crunchy anymore. Or semi-crunchy, I should say. Now remember, we're gonna get some water from the kale, so that is also gonna help in the cooking process and softening these things up. But we're doing this because 
there is no bread in the house and I am not going out there to get it. <laughs> so I'm gonna use these breadcrumbs. I'm gonna season them up. So I got some garlic powder here. Come on, it don't wanna stay open. It's just messing with me. <laughs> I'm gonna do about a teaspoon. Got some black pepper here. About a teaspoon. And I got some salt here. I got too much. And that's about a teaspoon and a half. The rest of this stuff I'm gonna throw in the sink. And I'm gonna mix that in. Taste it till it comes. Pretty good. A little bit more black pepper for me. All right. And a little bit more. That's about a tablespoon more. Okay, you see the mixture is getting nearly really cakey. That's what I want. And I'll bring you back once the kale is ready. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some fish in the oven and um, I'm gonna smother it with some shrimp. Um, yeah, some shrimp uh, gravy, shrimp and gravy, Cajun shrimp, I guess. Just a sec. While that is going, I got my oven preheated to 350 and I'm going to season up some fish. I soak this fish in lemon juice and um, I'm just going to get ready to season it up. I'm going to go into the oven so it's going to be really, it's going to be really easy. I'm going to use some Slap Your Mama, cover that. Some Old Bay seasoning, Blackman seasoning. Get the other side. Smoked paprika. That is not open. Let me see if I have one open up here. This one's not open either. Well, let me open this so smoke. Where did I put it? Lord have mercy. Now I'm going to act up again. <laughs> I was trying to be nice, but no. I bet you I find the open one after I open this. Just a little bit of smoked paprika for some color. And a little bit of flavor because smoked paprika is not the same as regu regular paprika. Okay, I'm going to turn it over. Oh. A little salt. I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing. Slap your mama. Ooh, that stuff comes out quick. What did I forget? Salt, a little bit of salt. And what I forgot, oh, garlic, the holy grail. Always use garlic. Always, always, always use garlic. Let me put a little bit of more sloppy mama on here since it wiped off 
during the turning process. Make sure I get all of that on there. Okay, so we're gonna put this in the oven, and get some oil. Pour it on there. Let me get them all close together and personal. Some oil on there. We're gonna bake it in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna put it in the oven at 350 and I'll be right back. On to the kale. Let me get my mitts on. We're gonna strain this water out. The kale lump boiled down to nothing, <laughs> but that's okay. So we're gonna get the water out of the kale and I'm gonna take it back over once it um, strains out. See you on the other side. So I have my kale here that done boiled down to nothing. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put it in my breadcrumbs. mix those together. <clears throat> so this is too dry for me. I'm going to put a little bit more chicken broth in there. And while I'm doing it, I'm chopping this stuff up. Now that I've gotten them together like that, let me give it a little taste test. It needs more garlic. You see that it is like a stiff cake mix now, right? Let me give it another taste. That's better. Hey, let me get a small dish because this is not a lot. Move this out of the way. Here I have my small dish. I'm going to take this and I'm going to spread it across like a casserole. I'm gonna take some panko, you don't have to do this, and I'm gonna sp sprinkle it on top. Just for GP, I'm gonna put a little bit more chicken stock in there. All right, I'm gonna put this in the oven. See you in a second. Our time, timer just went off. Let's check on our fish. It's been about 20 minutes. Let me put these on. I don't feel like putting them on. Let me take a look, take a look-see, look-see. I'm gonna let them go for about five more minutes. And I'll be back. All right, for our shrimp, we're going to do a roux. 
So for the roux, you need onion, bell pepper, celery, garlic, and some flour. We're gonna bring it down with some of the excess chicken broth that we had. And then we have our seasonings here. We're gonna use parsley, slap your mama, sea salt, and maybe a little bit of more garlic. So this pan is heated with some olive oil. The first thing I'm gonna put in here is my bell pepper and I'm gonna splash myself. Then I'm gonna put my onion in. And I'm gonna put my celery in. While that's frying up, our timer for our fish just went off. So let me check the fish. Our fish is done. Isn't that pretty? Let's let you take another look. Cover it with the lid so it don't go, um, so it don't get hard on me. We want to cook these until they're soft. Turn it down to seven. I'll put my flour in. And that was about two tablespoons of flour. What I'm doing now is trying to cook off the floury taste with the vegetables. I still have my garlic here and I don't want to add that until almost last because the garlic might burn and you don't want burn garlic. It don't taste good. So let's get it started. Yes. I'm getting stuff over here. The normal way to cook roux is without the vegetables, but I'm trying to do it the quick, simple way. So you will put the oil in the pan and then you'll put the flour and you brown the flour off minus the vegetables, but I'm doing it the opposite way. So I'll have a kind of a blonde roux, rather a blondish roux um, instead of a, um, a dark, dark brown roux. But I'll fix that with the paprika. No problem. <laughs> I can make it darker. <laughs> I'm gonna keep moving these vegetables around. Cooking off this flour. E taste, I'm not cooking off the flour, but I'm cooking off the floury taste. Okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna put, put my garlic in. And right behind the garlic, I'm gonna put my chicken broth in. A little bit of flour went a long way, didn't it? <laughs> Now, because this thing is a little thick already, I'm gonna put some water in it. Time to add my season. I'm gonna put some slap your mama in there. About a tablespoon. Salt. Oh, that's too much salt. About a teaspoon. Parsley. Just a handful of parsley. And then for color, I'm going to add, I wish I had regular paprika, but I don't. Let me check. There's all smoked. So because I don't have regular paprika, I'm gonna use smoked paprika to give it some color. I'll open the other side. Turn this down, I had it on high, I need to bring it down. Don't want it to cook that quickly. The last thing I'm gonna add is the shrimp when I bring this down enough. Don't get any of this on you. This stuff is like maypalm. Let me get a spoon and see if it is salted and seasoned the way I want it. something. I need some fire. Fire. That's what I need. Some fire. A little bit of slap your mama. A little bit more. That's good. Don't eat any more of this. I may have needed some more shrimp though because I got a whole bunch and I'm putting my shrimp in now. Got a whole bunch of roux and a little bit of shrimp, but that's okay. I can get more shrimp out of the refrigerator later. I do this for dem demonstration purposes. Get that in there. Make sure this roux don't turn into a, a mess. This sauce is just going over our gravy. This sauce is just going over our fish, I'm sorry, as a gravy. out of the way.
So this can be used, I mean, this roux, this shrimp, shrimp roux can be used over, um, over great grits and cornmeal and all kind of stuff. You don't have to put it over fish. It's hindsight 2020, I do want some grits. So I'm gonna make about a quarter cup of grits. Yeah, a quarter cup of grits. So I have a cup of water in here, right? And I got the, the hot fire on already. This takes about five to seven minutes. My shrimp is already done. Just like that. I am gonna cover it so it doesn't get all sticky icky. Any little, little, any little. <laughs> All right. Here's a quarter cup of grits and a cup of water. And I am going to get a spoon and stir it up like Bob Marley said. You know what this grits need? Some butter. Butter, butter. Can't have grits without butter. And now that I'm thinking about it, shouldn't have grits without cheese either, but I'm just gonna do regular grits. This stuff is already, um, and I just threw a, like a spoonful of, of butter in there. Let's get this thing a little bit higher. higher. Oh, it's fire. Not higher. <laughs> fire. Wait for that to boil and then we'll have to stir it because it'll stick to the bottom of the pan. God, I got to organize my refrigerator. I've just been throwing stuff in there on top of one another. Oh, let's get our, um, I forgot something. Our kale. The main dish is just sitting in the oven all by its lonesome. So that's done. There go our kale. Okay, my grits are boiling, so I have to start stirring. And these are instant grits. They take five to seven minutes to cook. Not hard at all to do. Just make sure it don't burn. And you stir them because you don't want lumpy grits. are also like meat palm. They're cooked. They need some salt though. They need some salt. And this thing, this pot is also like cast, cast iron, so you got to keep on stirring. Let me get some salt. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be right back. I don't want this type of salt. Where's my other salt? Where is my other type of salt? I don't know. Oh, I put it in the other cabinet. <laughs> Back to what we were doing. Make sure this stuff don't get hard and lumpy. Let me get my salt. Mm. There it is. So I got a little bit of salt in my hand. I'm going to sprinkle it in just a little bit. Rest goes in the sink. Okay, our grits are done. These are quick grits. They take five to seven minutes to do. No problem. Why do I still have the oven on? We are going to plate. We have our grits here, our shrimp, our fish, and our kale. Just a second. It's going to be a miracle. 
<laughs> well, we're done. This is Jamerica 5288. Please like and subscribe. Take a look at that. Doesn't it look good? Oh, I don't know. I think I outdo myself every time. <laughs> so if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe. I know I just said that, but I'm saying it again. And I will see you on the next one. This is really easy. So let's get it together and let's get it together. Together. <laughs> Bye.